Hi, welcome to my channel if you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I have an exciting video for you all. I am going to be sharing my February TBR as well as my Blackathon TBR and all of the books that I'm super excited to get to this month. But before we get into the video, I do want to give you all the information on the Lights Out Book Club book pick for this month. If you don't know, Lights Out Book Club is my book club I run here on YouTube. And basically every month we choose a thriller or a horror book to read. And I have a different co-host each month and we do a live show for the book and everyone can kind of discuss it. And it's a really fun time. I've really enjoyed doing it. I've been doing it since September. So I've loved it. I'm definitely keeping it off. But the pick for this month that won in the poll is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes, and I'm so excited for this book. I was actually sent an arc by Nightfire, so I'm so thankful for the arc, but this comes out on the 8th, so I highly recommend pre-ordering it because this concept sounds amazing. And this month I asked Katrina from Katrina Brown here on YouTube to be my co-host, and I'm so excited for her to be my co-host. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to her channel. She makes amazing horror and thriller content. I'm always just really impressed with all the content she puts out. It's so consistent and interesting and I just love watching her channel. So if you are a thriller or a horror lover, I would highly recommend checking out her channel. And I'm so excited to have her as the co-host for this month. So I'm gonna read the description of this one and it sounds really unique and interesting. So it says, Claire is days away from being unemployed, made obsolete, when her beacon repair crew picks up a strange distress signal. With nothing to lose and no desire to return to Earth, Claire and her team decide to investigate. What they find at the other end of the signal is shocking. The Aurora, a famous luxury space liner that vanished on its maiden tour of the solar system more than 20 years ago. A salvage claim like this could set Claire and her crew up for life. But a quick trip through the Aurora reveals something isn't right. Whispers in the dark, flickers of movement, words scrawled in blood. Claire must fight to hold on to her sanity and find out what really happened on the Aurora before she and her crew meet the same ghastly fate. So this sounds like it combines a few genres like science fiction, horror, and thriller elements. I think this is primarily a horror novel. And I remember that the author said that she was really, really inspired by the Titanic, obviously, and that she always wanted to write a book with this sort of premise, but making it in space. So I think this really has an amazing setup for a book. I think it's going to be a fun time. I'm really excited about this. And yeah, I would love for you to participate in the book club make sure you comment below if you're planning to read this with us and let's get on to the next part of this video. So now I'm going to move on to sharing my TBR for Blackathon and this is a readathon made by Jesse over at Bowties and Books. If you're not already subscribed to Jesse, I would highly recommend subscribing to them. And yeah, this readathon is amazing. Jesse created it. And basically what this readathon is, is a readathon created to celebrate black authors. Of course, it's Black History Month this month, so it's the perfect time for this readathon. And also not just celebrate black authors, but also black creators. So I will list everyone who is involved in this readathon in my description. Please go through and check them all out as well as subscribe or follow them on Instagram and check out all their content. I will also put just all the information I'm talking about in this video in the description. So my information for my book club and then all of the Blackathon information. But anyway, this readathon has four teams, which I think is really, really cool. They all cover different genres. So there's a sci-fi fantasy team, a thriller horror mystery team, a literature contemporary and nonfiction team, and then a romance team. So you can pick any of these teams to join. Of course, you all know which team I'm going to join. I am definitely going to join the horror thriller mystery category because I read those genres. And this team is hosted by Jesse and Nina. And Nina is a bookstagrammer and I absolutely love her content. I'm obsessed with her content. She has so many good recommendations for horror and thriller books. And her Instagram is so aesthetically pleasing. She always has amazing recommendations just consistently throughout the whole year. So I highly recommend following her Instagram and then of course subscribing to Jesse, following them and everything like I said before. But anyway, for this there are prompts. So I'm gonna read out the prompts for this category because I will be in this group. 
So there's Four Prompts, a book that explores the duality of vengeance slash the justice system, to a book with mental health slash physical health slash neurodivergent representation, three, a book with an adjective in the title, and then a group book, which is The Perfect Ruin by Shonora Williams. So I have planned out the books that I'm going to read for each of these categories. I'll share them in a minute, but I also just want to share that this readathon has a lot of different components and parts that you can participate in. So there's going to be an Instagram challenge, movie nights, live shows, and so many more things. So again, check my description for all of that information. So for the first prompt, I decided to do the group book for this one because it fits this prompt. And that one, like I said, is The Perfect Ruin. And then for the second prompt, I would like to read Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've heard that this seems to deal with mental health rep. even though it's not specifically stated in the book. So I really want to read this one. Actually behind me, I have White Smoke and Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I really enjoyed both of these books. I will say I did actually enjoy Grown a little bit more than White Smoke, but if you need something with mental health rep, I would definitely recommend White Smoke. And let me just pull out these covers really quick. I'm obsessed with them. So White Smoke has this gorgeous cover. And then of course, Grown, which is actually one of my favorite covers of all time. It's so, so beautiful. As soon as I saw this, I said, I don't care what genre this is, I'm buying it. <laughs> and it turned out to be perfect for what I like. It's sort of a thriller. It is sort of a contemporary as well. It's sort of a mix of genres. But yeah, anyway, I knew I had to own this no matter what. But White Smoke is about Marigold who moves with her blended family into this new town and into this old kind of creepy house. And basically she starts to suspect that it may be haunted and also she has this really, really creepy little sister, well stepsister. And this stepsister basically is telling her that someone wants her gone, basically like a friend of hers wants her gone. So it's implied that it's sort of a ghost. And anytime there's a creepy kid in a story, I just find it really effective. So I would highly recommend this one as well if you want a creepy atmosphere, dealing with a haunted house setting as well as a creepy kid, but also it has some social commentary as well. So I think you should pick this one up if you haven't read it before. And then for a book with an adjective in the title, I either want to read the group book or if I can get to it, I want to read The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du, which I've heard amazing things about. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to it this month, but we'll see. So I'm definitely going to read the group book and then we'll see from there what I have time to read after. And then of course the fourth prompt is the group book. So yeah, those are the books I plan on reading for the readathon. I hope I can participate in some of the other challenges. Sometimes during readathons, I get a little stressed out to try to do everything with the readathon. So we'll see what happens, but I'm definitely going to read the prompts for the thriller horror category. And yeah, I'm really excited. Let me know in the comments if you're planning on participating in this readathon. So for the next part of this video, I want to talk about all of the books that I want to get to this month. Again, I am so bad at my TBRs. I'm probably not going to be able to read all of these because realistically, I usually read kind of about four to eight books. Usually it's about six books consistently per month. I'm really hoping to up it this year, but Anyway, I want to talk about all of these though because I'm very interested in them and all of these are by black authors. I really, really, really want to focus on just reading books from black authors this month as much as I can. So let's get into these books and I kind of want to start in priority order because some of these I'm really excited to and definitely will be reading and then there's other ones that I'll see if I have time towards the end of the month. So the first book I want to talk about is Cherish Farah, and this one actually hasn't come out yet but it comes out on the 8th and I was actually provided an arc of this which I'm so thankful for so I hope to start it before it comes out but I'm gonna read the description for this one it says from best-selling author Bethany C Morrow comes a new adult social horror novel in the vein of get out meets my sister the serial killer about Farah a young calculating black girl who manipulates her way into the lives of her black best friends white wealthy adopted family but soon suspects she may not be the only one with alternative ulterior motives. So this one sounds really, really interesting and something about the cover just really, really 
intrigues me. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next little novella I want to talk about is Cirque Berserk, and this one is by Jessica Guess. And can we just take a moment to appreciate this cover? It's gorgeous, it's stunning, it's retro, it's everything I wanted to cover. And also, this book is short. It's only, let's see, I'm trying not to spoil anything. Who else is like, they try to see the pages and they try not to spoil anything so they have to like cover it or unfocus their eyes. That's me every time. 167 pages but I'm so excited for this one because it has this haunted carnival trope which is something I've been looking for and I'm really really excited for it. So let me tell you what this one is about. So in the summer of 1989, basically there was a massacre at this local carnival and a group of teens murdered a dozen people, but then they disappeared. So now 30 years later, these high school seniors learn about this urban legend. And so they decide, hey, let's go check it out. Let's go to this carnival, which why would they do that? But I'm so glad they're doing it because I want a book about it. But anyway, they go to this carnival and basically they end up fighting for their lives. So this kind of sounds like a slasher retro vibe book. Can't wait to read it. This may be the one I pick up first because it just sounds so amazing and I've heard really good things. Actually, I know Katrina really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm excited for this one. All right, the next one I'm really excited for is When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen and I've actually started this one. Also, look at this cute bookmark. I think it's really cute. It sort of matches the cover or just kind of the scheme in my opinion. So I love doing that with bookmarks. But basically this one I've already started and it has a really strong atmospheric start. I've heard that it's a slow burn, but I know that slow burns oftentimes have a huge payout. At least that's what I've experienced in slow burn horror movies. I haven't read many slow burn novels yet that are horror, but yeah, I really want to give this one a go and I've heard just nothing but great things about it. So this is about a black woman and she returns to her hometown for a plantation wedding. And this wedding is from her best friend who she has distanced herself from and they don't really speak anymore, but she kind of feels obligated to go and be there for her because of their shared history. So horror starts to ensue though when she starts to reconnect with the blood-soaked history of the land and also the best friends she left behind. So the next one is My Sister the Serial Killer by Owen Khan Braithwaite. And I have had this one for a while. Also, look at the little cover, it's so cute. It's like this tiny little book. I'm trying to show you like for reference how big it is. So this is a book of the month and it fits right here. So it's a tiny little book. I also just love the kind of shiny feel of it and also the letters. You can almost trace them and feel the letters if that makes sense. So very satisfying. Love this little book. I got this from Half Price Books. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on to what this book is about. So this is basically about the main character and her name is Kori and basically her sister has these boyfriends and then she repeatedly commits murders. So she murders her boyfriends and then sort of just moves on to the next boyfriend. And so she's been cleaning up her sister's murders because she wants to protect her sister and on the back there's this spray bottle, it's perfect. But one day her sister actually starts dating this man who she's been in love with for a really long time and obviously that complicates things because she doesn't want him to be murdered. So I've heard that this is a little bit less of a thriller and sort of just a drama, but I'm excited for it. And also I heard it's a dark comedy, which I haven't really read many dark comedies. I've definitely seen them, but I haven't read them. So we'll see what I think of this one. And I know Kayla really, really enjoys this. Kayla from Books and Lala. So I can't wait to give it a shot. So the next one I'm really interested in because if you don't know, I got a degree. I got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in violin performance. Performance. And this one is called The Violin Conspiracy. And this is by Brendan Slocum. And I'm going to read the description of this one. So it says, a riveting tale about a black classical musician whose family heirloom violin is stolen on the eve of the most prestigious classical music competition in the world. Ray McMillian loves playing the violin more than anything, and nothing will stop him from pursuing his dream of becoming a professional musician. Not his mother who thinks he should get a real job, not the fact that he can't afford a high caliber violin, not the racism inherent in the classical music world. 
And when he makes the startling discovery that his great-grandfather's fiddle is actually a priceless Stradivarius, his star begins to rise. Then, with the International Tchaikovsky Competition, the Olympics of classical music, fast approaching, his prized family heirloom is stolen. Wright is determined to get it back, but now his family and the descendants of a man who once enslaved Ray's great-grandfather are each claiming that the violin belongs to them. With the odds stacked against him and the pressure mounting, will Ray ever see his beloved violin again? So imagining that you're not able to have this instrument that you're very connected to and people are saying it belongs to them, that is such a scary situation for me. I can't imagine that. Yikes. <laughs> it just makes me anxious. So yeah, I'm really interested in this one. I've never read anything that involves the classical music world and I was in it. So I obviously have some insight into it, but this kind of delves deeper into the layers of what really happens in the classical music world, a lot of the negative things that happen. And yeah, I am really interested in picking this one up. All right, so I have two more books that I wanna talk about that I may or may not get to, but I do wanna mention them, and they are The Other Black Girl, and this one is by Zakia Delilah Harris, and then Dead Dead Girls by Nikisa Afia. So first, let's talk about the synopsis of The Other Black Girl. So this is about a woman who works at this publishing company and basically she's the only black girl there and she's really tired of it. But a new black woman starts working there and she's at this cubicle right next to her and they start a friendship. However, as soon as this other woman arrives, the main character starts getting threatening messages on her desk and it says, leave Wagner now. And she's trying to figure out what's going on, who this might be and why they are leaving threatening messages. And she really doesn't know who to trust even the new woman. So this one is a book of the month book. I got this a few months ago. And then this book has this stunning cover. I want this in an art print. It's just gorgeous. Oh, it's so pretty. This is actually the last book I physically bought in Texas, which is cool. It kind of has a little special memory. I got it at this bookstore called Fabled. It's actually, this shirt is from Fabled as well. It's this beautiful indie bookstore that I loved going to. I miss it so much. The atmosphere is just incredible inside it and I really loved it. But anyway, let's get into what this book is about. In Harlem in 1926, black girls like Louise are ending up dead. Louise is arrested after an altercation with a police officer and she's given an ultimatum that she can either help the police solve this case or let a judge make an example of her. And I forgot to mention, this is the first book in a series that will be starting. All right, the last book in this category is The Taking of Jake Livingston and I keep saying this, oh my gosh, I always say this, but this cover is so gorgeous. I always comment on covers that I'm obsessed with because they really do make a difference for me. Even though I don't wanna judge books by their covers, I do, <laughs> like I always do. If I see a stunning cover in a bookstore, I will want to pick it up. And it's just this glossy, reflective, stunning artwork piece, basically. And I love just everything about this cover. But basically, I haven't read this one yet because I've had so many people say it has disappointed them because they had such high hopes because of the premise and the cover and just everything about it. But <laughs> I will say, I do still want to try to give this a shot. I know Jan from Jan Agaton really enjoys this book. So yeah, I don't know. I want to read it at some point. It's short. I'll probably just DNF it if I'm not feeling it. It's only, you know, a little more than 200 pages. But anyway, this is about Jake and he goes to this prestigious prep school. He's one of the only black people there and also he can see dead people. Okay, so moving on to my last category, one of my most anticipated books of the year and it is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. And if you don't know, <laughs> I feel like everyone knows, but if you're new to my channel, I love The Guest List. I freaking love The Guest List. It was one of my favorite books, if not my favorite book from 2020 that I read. All, I think it actually tied, he, okay, here's the thing, <laughs> tangent. I love The Guest List, I loved it. I had an amazing time reading. It was just a fun freaking ride. However, I read Pretty Girls that year, which is probably one of the best thrillers I've ever read in my life. It's so well written, but that book wasn't enjoyable the whole entire time because it is just so extremely disturbing. So I like them both for different reasons. Ultimately, Pretty Girls, hands down, is so much better of a book and everything, but 
the guest list. I'm obsessed with it. I read it also with a full cast on audiobook, which was so amazing. And I definitely want to read The Paris Apartment if I can with an audiobook because it will probably follow suit and probably have multiple different voices in the audiobook reading, which really enhanced the story for me. But anyway, I enjoyed the hunting party. I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as the guest list. I only gave it three and a half stars, whereas the guest list I gave five stars. They were sort of like a repeat of each other in story. It was a very similar thing. It was a group of friends in this isolated setting. We know somebody has been murdered or dies and then it's rotating between present timeline, past timeline, and kind of leading up to the present. And so they're very similar. So I'm excited that this one seems to sort of be breaking the mold a little bit and also be sort of a trope that I really like as well, which is sort of a locked room mystery. So this takes place in an apartment building, which I really enjoy in horror stories. I loved Lock Every Door. I loved Only Murders in the Building, which is a TV show on Hulu. Highly recommend it. It's so, so good. I binged it so fast. Like I said, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager is one of my favorite books of all time. It's so good. I just love that kind of locked door mystery feel. But I'm gonna read the description for this. Jess needs a fresh start. She's broken alone and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother Ben didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no, and surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment, could Ben really have afforded this? He's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation, and the more questions she has. Ben's neighbors are an eclectic bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like it's Ben's future that's in question. The socialite, the nice guy, the alcoholic, the girl on the verge, the concierge, everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. So this one, it just has such good potential. I'm so excited and I'm trying not to keep my hopes too high because I feel like the guest list is just gonna be the top of her books. Maybe not though, we'll see. I'm excited though. All right, so the next book that I'm really excited for is The Violence by Delilah S. Dawson. So I actually read her middle grade book that came out this year. It's right behind me. It is mine and this one has an incredible cover. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. It was my first middle grade horror novel and I'm really looking forward to it and I want to read more middle grade horror novels. And this one basically is about this girl who moves into this new home and she starts to feel like it is haunted. And there were some parts in here that were genuinely chilling and creepy. I really enjoyed her writing style when she was writing scary scenes. I thought it was really, really well crafted and this made me really enjoy this book. I will say the ending is a bit cheesy but I think that's just because it's a kids book and I just overall had an amazing experience reading this one and also tangent before we talk about the next one this is by a different author and this is by India Hill Brown and this one is another middle grade book and this little blurb on the front says, this ghost story gave me chill after chill, it will haunt you. And R.L. Stein wrote that. This one takes place in a winter setting, which is really cool as well. And I'll just read the back of it for you. On a cold winter night, Iris and her best friend Daniel sneak into the woods to play in the snow. There, Iris makes a perfect snow angel only to uncover the crumbling gravestone of a young girl named Avery Moore. Soon, strange things start to happen. She begins having vivid nightmares. She thinks she sees the shadow of a girl lurking in the night, and she feels the pull of the abandoned grave calling her back to the woods. So that's just some of the description, and it sounds amazing and perfect for the wintertime. But anyway, back to Delilah S. Dawson's work. The Violence, this one came out on the first, which is today while I'm filming this, and this is an adult novel. And the color in this, the fact that it's just this red background with this knife is just so eye-catching. I love the color red and also just the fact that it's sort of this plain, simple cover that really, really shows you what this novel is gonna be like. I love it. It says, a mysterious plague that causes random bouts of violence is sweeping through the nation. Now three generations of women must navigate their chilling new reality in this moving exploration of identity, cycles of abuse, and hope. 
So Chelsea seems to have the perfect life. She married her high school sweetheart and has two daughters and lives in this perfect home, keeps it super tidy and beautiful. But her husband is actually abusive and no one knows this and she feels trapped. And she's really worrying about her daughters as well, being stuck in the same situation of being trapped with him. So since this virus is spreading, she sees this as an opportunity to take revenge on her abuser and liberate herself. So this sounds fantastic and also I really like revenge novels, so I'm specifically drawn to that as well. Okay, hi. <laughs> I missed something in my video, so I'm sitting here editing and everything I've got on my sweatshirt, my comfy sweatshirt, you know, at my setup. Anyway, I forgot about the Book Troops book club pick for this month. Totally forgot about it, so I want to read that one. It's called The Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant. It's about this daughter and father, and they live in isolation and they lived that way forever, but the daughter starts to want to kind of integrate into the real world. Also, there's only one person who shows up every year, the father's friend, to provide them food and supplies, and this year a stranger shows up, so everything changes. So this one is a slow burn kind of mystery and it looks really interesting and I really do want to get to this book this month. That's everything for this video. I hope you all have a great February reading month and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.